Sorry to make this video, but I've got to make a correction in some of the stuff I've been saying about intercalation. You see in front of you um, a little, you know, Excel worksheet on the difference between the equinoxes. Here, the autumnal equinox this year, because we're just, actually, we're just coming up on our own vernal, or actually our own vernal just passed. Um, the autumnal equinox for 2015 is going to occur on 23rd of September. So somebody wrote me an email to say, hi, how can you say it's 30 days per month when the difference between the equinoxes doesn't correspond to that? And he raised a good question, so that's why I'm making this video. Um, the autumnal equinox this year is September 23rd. That's what the sun and the moon, the sun does. It's its distance from Earth such that at noon there's no shadow cast, whether it's in the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere. In the northern hemisphere, we call it autumnal equinox, okay? They have to call it the spring equinox. In the southern hemisphere, what they call the spring equinox, um, the autumnal equinox, is what we call the spring equinox. But the point is, is it's a position of the sun. And God had them design their calendars, Israel, based on the position of the sun at the vernal equinox. That's what Exodus 12 tells you. Now, when the world was created, Okay, we don't know when that was, how that was, who that was. But when Adam fall, fell, we do know when that was. That was the autumnal equinox. Or God reset the whole universe, if you felt like it. I mean, I really don't know how he did it. I just know that he did it. Um, to be the autumnal equinox when time started. Okay, for us. Okay, in other words, Adam's days began to be numbered at his fall, Genesis 3.22. Okay, in context. All right. So, the number of days between the autumnal equinox and the vernal, just measured like that, is only 178. But, the number of days from the next vernal equinox for 2016. All right which happens on the 20th. And the next vernal equinox for 2016, which happens on the 23rd, okay? I think it's the 23rd. Let's find out. 22nd, okay. That's 186 days. So now you're looking at the difference between difference between the March equinox and the very day of, because you don't know what time of day it's going to be on in your location, and the very day of the autumnal. That's 186 days. Now what that ends up meaning is that Israel should be intercalating, not in Adar, which is generally speaking February 1st part of March, they should be intercalating in Elul, okay, which is just before the September equinox. In other words, the month of Elul would normally be 30 days, but you add the 5.25 days to it. You just add it to the same month. In other words, that month will always have that number of days, unlike the other t the other. 11 months of the year. Elul should always have 35 and then if it's after sundown the next day um, 36 days in leap year. You will always hit the autumnal equinox on time if you do that. Always. You'll never miss it. Because the time period from the autumnal to the March equinox is shorter. And you're looking at the math that proves it right there. If, if they intercalated right here, or right here really, added the extra five days in what they call the month of Elul. Elul, if Elul was always 35.25 days, okay, and then, you know, every 
to make up for the 0.25 every four years, it'll end up being six days. They will always hit the autumnal equinox on time. Always. Can't miss it. But they're not intercalating then. And like a dummy, I didn't do the math you see here. Took somebody writing me an email to make my brain wake up. Okay, I didn't do the math. I just went with what all the scholars were saying. Well, they intercalated and created an Adar Shani. It shouldn't have been an Adar. It should have been an eagle. So I thought, oh, okay, do we have any evidence that the Jews knew this? Because, you know, just because Brainout knows it and it's mathematically correct doesn't make it true, right? You know, the math is the math, irrespective of who does it. You're looking at the math. You don't have to be a doctor. You know, you don't have to have, you know, 16 initials after your name to do the math. Well, clearly Israel's never done the math. Well, actually, she used to do the math. That's what this next thing is in. This is a book. And I'll bring this back up so you can see it. All right. I don't know what's wrong with my monitor. This is a book that you can buy called Calendars in Antiquity, Empires and States by Sacha Stern. Okay, you can buy it in Amazon. It's in my buy list, but it's 147 bucks. And it's not any cheaper anywhere else. So his point about this is he's just reviewing the history of how people use the calendar. Okay, what I had done is I had searched here, intercalation, eagle, Jewish calendar. Okay, and then not in this listing, but in another listing when I'd done it earlier, I don't see it listed here now. I got his link. All right. CERN is basically saying, see, I always correspond if an intercalar intercalary elo had been inserted. In other words, he's thinking in terms of if we create a new month of elo, elo sheni. But you don't have to do that. All you have to do is have elo always be 35.25 days. See, David designed the priestly courses on a 24-hour day. The 24 priestly courses, not 30. Okay, so then each priest is serving for X number of hours, then he's relieved by the next priest, so that by the end of the solar, solar, solar year, each priest will serve 365.25 hours, or in a leap year, 366 hours. It's really simple. See, God knows how to tell time, but we're not listening to him. All right, so this page is going through... I want to starting basically up here. It's talking about intercalation and when it was done. And was it done in Elo? See? It turns out that the Babylonian calendar was had Elo. But you don't have to create a second Elo. You just tack on the days to the only Elo, and Elo will always be 35.25 days. Okay, so the point is, is that they used to, used to intercalate in Elul until the exile. And where was that? It's somewhere in this page. It talked about how the Babylonian Talmud said that they were intercalating based on Elul until the Babylonian exile. And you can read, you can go read it. It's, it's in here somewhere. I'll try to find it again and put a link in the video description as to what page it's on. But the Babylonian Talmud says this, not just the sky. Okay, so what happened? Did all the Jews' brains just turn off? And what happened to us Christians too? Did all our brains turn off? We can fix this, okay? We can fix it. All we have to do, now the, the vernal equinox has passed, but we know when the autumnal equinox is coming, at the autumnal equinox, five days before the autumnal equinox, we add five days to our calendar. And we subtract all those goofball other dates. We just make everything 30. 
except for the months before the autumnal equinox needs to be 35.25. And especially the Jewish calendar needs to adjust. Because it's all fakakta now. Now, if you're a Jew, fine. I'm not trying to be against Jews. This is against the Bible, that the Jews are doing something against the Bible. I'm sure no Jew gets up in the morning and says, gee, I'd like to violate Torah today. Nobody gets up and says that. No Christian gets up in the middle of the morning and says, gee, I'd like to violate the Bible today. No pagan even does that. No atheist even does that. So we're making these mistakes century after century after century. For what reason? Because we don't know any better. Okay, but we can fix it. Why don't we fix it? Why don't we fix it by the September equinox? And one of the things I've got to fix, see, maximum mea culpa. One of the things I've got to fix is i got to go back now in all those places where I said they intercalated in Adar. Actually, it's true that they intercalated in Adar, but they should be intercalating in Elul. Okay, first, first three weeks of September, last week of August. That's what they should be doing. That's what we all should be doing. And now what I should be doing is go back and fix all the intercalation topics that I covered to see if I can stick in Elo somewhere. But now you know. God got it right. They're looking at it. Intercalate in Elo. Last week of August, first three weeks of September is the month of Elo. Intercalate there, people, and you'll get your calendars right for a change, whether you're a Christian, a Jew, or a pagan. And then you don't have to bother with how many days has September, April, June, and November. Peace out. Wait, I forgot to include this other book. It's really important. Whenever you're going to criticize, the most important thing you can do is figure out how the error got made or what was the motive for it. Because until you can account for the error, until you can account for the why, you're not sure that what you're saying is true. You have to account for the why. If you get it right, why did you get it right? If you got it wrong, why did you get it wrong? Not to criticize, but so that you can learn. The purpose of criticism, ideally, is never to actually just criticize or say something bad. But it's so that you can learn and fix it. Okay? So here's the next step in the thing that I forgot to cover in the past increment. Okay? Which is going to be, a, this is going to be attached to it. Why didn't they intercalate in ADAR because surely somebody in 2,000 years, 5,000 years did the math here, okay? They were able to detect when the equinox occurred because they had things like sundials. You even see the story told about it in um, Isaiah where Isaiah asked the Lord to turn this, the sun backwards 15. Um, that was because he had a shadow marker. They had like little sticks that they stuck in particular places where they had measured the, the latitude and the longitude and the angle and blah, 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 because that's been known forever. And when the stick never didn't show a shadow at noon, okay, that it was supposed to show, that meant it was the vernal equinox because only two days of a year vernal and autumnal equinox will that happen and of course you're going to know the difference between spring and fall duh okay so they knew this math they had to know so then why didn't they just do it right the first time well here's a book that offers an idea who she's quoting somebody but I can't tell who because that's on pages 70 and 71 okay and her book is 72 bucks or more so I have to get that one too all right, some some nasty means leader in Palestine, and I'm reading right here. The nasty in Palestine is the one who has the right to decide on the calendar order. In other words, Israel was saying, "Oh, that we are the ones who determine the calendar." Of course, the Rome had the same custom. We determine the calendar. What you can't do the math yourself. See, this is where arrogance goes. It's due to arrogance that they're not intercalating in Elul. Because the Babylonians did that. Well, hello, where did the Babylonians get it from? The Babylonian calendar was based on the Jewish calendar. 
And how do we know that? Oh, because Daniel was in charge. Duh! Sorry. I, I, I just, stupidity that doesn't get corrected is a real annoyance to me. I'm sorry. Stupidity, mistakes, well, I'm stupid. I make mistakes. That's, that's a given. Not nice, not fun, but it's a given. Okay, fine. So fix your mistakes. Okay? Here's a mistake. Well, it's not a mistake. It's an arrogance. The nasty in Palestine is the one who has a right to decide on the calendar order. Yeah, and in Rome they called it Pontifex Maximus. To prove this, the third takes the trouble to survey in his homily the history of intercalation from creation of the world on 25 ELO. Really? The world was created on 25 Elo, says who? God doesn't say that. I'm doing the meter in Genesis now. There's no reference to when the world was created. There's every reference to how God designs time. Okay? See? I haven't finished it yet, so you're not going to be able to download this. But I'm up, see? First day, second day. See, he's got a little intercalation there. I don't know what it's for. Okay? That's the second day, rather. Then he's got another 70. I don't know why he's doing it there. Okay, here's the third day. There's another intercalation there. I don't know what it's for. I'm going to find out, though. Fifth day, fourth day, third day. Third day, Shalishi. Third day. Okay, fourth day. Fifth day. That's as far as I've gone. The rest of the meter that you see here, I haven't counted yet. That's why they all say 22. <laughs> Okay, so God is saying something about time, and he ain't saying nothing about no 25th of Elul. Okay, it's true that on the 24th of Elul, that the walls were rebuilt by Nehemiah, that's in Nehemiah um, 6.15. The walls were rebuilt. That's not creation of the world. So who's coming up with 25 Elul? That's some kind of fakakta nonsense that somebody came up with. Okay, but the point is, is that this guy is evidence that there was a knowledge of the fact that you intercalated in Elul. Because the third, whoever the person is, I can't tell because that's on the previous pages, takes the trouble to survey in his homily the history of intercalation from the creation of the world on 25 Elul and from the creation of the luminaries on the night before Wednesday, the fourth day, 28 Elul. In other words, you were supposed to, yes, intercalate on ELO because those six days that you have to intercalate for represent the six days of initial creation. That's what this guy is saying. Well, I don't accord with that. I mean, there's no proof of this. The Bible doesn't say that, but it is cute. In other words, in commemoration of the creation of the world, they intercalate. The doctrinal meaning would, would stand because it's like, you know, 5.256 days, except that the real total is 7, so then they can't really even play this game with it. But at least you can see that there was a, a tradition of intercalation. From Adam, Enoch, Noah, Shem. Okay? And they intercalated in Elul, and where I wanted to show you and didn't have it then, but I got it now. Remember I said Babylonian Talmud? It's right here in this guy's footnote. The, the Sasha Stern book, page 254. Okay, right here. See, Babylonian Talmud frequently cites that since the days of Ezra, the month of Elul had not been intercalated. In other words, prior to Ezra, they were using Elul to intercalate. Okay, now I've got I've got a copy of the Talmud. I'll go look this up. But this is a citation. You know, the folio that it's in. You can go look it up. The tractate. And in rabbinictraditions.com, if you sign up there, and I strongly suggest you do, because it's got the Hebrew and the English side by side, you can sign up there and search the entire Talmud. Okay, and the, he's got like all of them. He's got the Babylonian, he's got the Jerusalem, he's got the, 
I forget what the third one is. Okay, you can search them all. Online at rabbinictraditions.com. The guy that owns that site is named, um, ooh, I forget his name now. I'll put a link in the video description. Anyway, the point is they used to intercalate in Elul before the exile. But because it was Babylonian, we're going to stop and we're going to do it in Adar because, here's our why, the Nasi in Palestine is the one who has the right to decide in the calendar order. In other words, they turned the calendar into a political issue. Who cares about the word of God? Who cares about being accurate even with respect to the seasons? Remember what it says in Daniel 11? That the Antichrist will change the times and seasons? Yeah, well, there's more than one Antichrist, isn't there? Now, we Christian Antichrists are doing the same thing. I don't want the Jews to be, you know, feel like they're, they're all alone. We're all spitting on Christ with our dates. we got to stop this. Who is going to fix it in this generation? All I can do is document it. I'm too old to, you know, go to school now and go get my Ph.D. and then start doing this so that people will listen to me. And besides, I'm female. We need some degreed male to do it because then people will listen. They're not going to listen to a dippy female. But the point here is, even a dippy female can see this is wrong, and even a dippy female knows how to correct it. And here's how to correct it, guys. Do the intercalation in Elo like you used to do. You want to follow tradition. Here's your tradition already. Okay? Over here. Tradition. Babylonian Talmud. You want to you wanna believe in the Talmud because you're Jewish and you say that this is the heritage of the Jews? Okay, fine. This is the heritage of the Jews. Go back to doing it in Elo. Stop doing it in Adar every three years. Do it in Elo every year. Just have Elo be 35.25 days and then some days and some years. Every fourth year. It's 366 days because Elo every four years is 36 days instead of 35.25. And then your calendar will line up for a change and you'll actually get Yom Kippur right. You'll actually get Rosh Hashanah right. Because right now, honey, you ain't. Okay, I'm going to close out this little calendar video by showing one. You'll be able to download this. I call it Intercal XLS. You can rename it what you want. It's a really simple calendar. All I did was look up the dates of the equinoxes. Okay? Here's your calendar if you want to reset to the real, what the Jews ought to use as their calendar for 2016. Okay? September 2015 equinox is on the 23rd. That is pre-sundown. For Israel. In Jerusalem, it'll be 11.20 a.m. So Rosh Hashanah starts on the same day. Same day. Now, you have to remember, in Bible's version of Jewish time, see, the Bible's really the right version of Judaism you should be if you're going to be a Jew or a Christian or anything else that's a believer in God. Okay? It begins evening, morning, one day. Okay? It says so right here. See, here we go. All right. Evening, morning, one day. Right here. Right here, right here, right here. Day one. Yom Echad. Day one. Got it? Day one. Evening, morning, one day. Here's the word for evening, Erev. Here's the word for day but also for the word for morning, Bokar. Bokar. I'm supposed to click my back of my throat when I say it. Bokar. But I, I, I'm not feeling like doing that right today. Okay? So, evening, morning, one day. Evening, previous evening on the same solar day is the new day. Okay, well, the new day, the real Rosh Hashanah this year begins on the 23rd at 11 a.m. So you start celebrating it at sundown. Got it? That's Rosh Hashanah. You want to know? Because the Jewish calendar, I just, I don't know how, they, how could they get it so wrong? 
course, how did the Catholics get it so wrong? How could the church fathers be such idiots? How could all my fellow Christians, not all of them, but most of them be such idiots? You know, you can sit there and kvetch about that all day long. Here's the equinox, 23rd, this year. Measurable event, measurable then in the ancient world, and measurable now with sticks. Even with sticks, you can tell at noon. Well, it occurs at 11.20 a.m. because we can now calculate it mathematically. And I'm sure they could in the ancient world, too. We didn't invent math. Okay, so now the first day of the new year is that same day. 23rd. That's one T3. Ding. So how long does T3 last? Using the Bible's math. Not the Jewish calendar, which is completely fakakta. If you want to observe Passover on the right day, you better be looking at this, not that. I don't see how they got it so wrong. Okay, shut up. Okay. T3. Second. Week. To the end. Total 30 days. September 23rd to October 22nd. Then you just keep on going, baby. Count the days. And when you get to Adar, you do not intercalate there because you're supposed to intercalate in Elul. See? You will reach March 20th is the equinox. It also occurs early in the morning, so not at sundown. So you don't call it March 21st until sundown on the 20th. Okay? till sundown on the 20th because it starts at 6.30 a.m. Jerusalem time. All right? So now we have 11 days after that. March 21 to April 19. Then that's for Nisan, a.k.a. Aviv in the Old, Aviv in the Old Testament. Okay, sometimes called Nissan in the New. Ziv, which is the Bible name for it. I-R, I don't know where they came up with that, but that's the name they use today. And then Sivan, 11th of which, right in between, what we would call June 1, is Pentecost. Okay, Tammuz, that's actually a Babylonian name, but nobody changed it. Av means father, haha. A, B is the spelling, but you pronounce the B softly. That goes to August 18. And then Elul is when you do the intercalation. 35 days, sometimes 36 days, depending on when the equinox occurs. Well, the September 2016 equinox occurs at 3.30 p.m. Jerusalem time. So again, it's the same thing. At sundown, you're going to call it, even though it's still the 22nd, you're going to call it the 23rd and begin your calendar that way. So you see, there's with there's a like a very short difference. But because you piggybacked at sundown on the prior day, that difference doesn't matter. The difference is actually in our math. The piggybacking on the prior day makes it a precise equation. It's our math that makes this off by a day. Because we call it by a new name day. New number. Okay? Just like when you say 1 BC, you go straight to 1 AD. You don't have an interim. Because when you're born, you're age 0. But they call it your first year. But you don't actually turn age 1 until the end of that year. See? Beginning versus ending of your calculation. That's why you have a differential. Because of the piggybacking, that solves the differential. You never have to have to worry about it. And notice you don't have to worry about leap years either. Because, you know, depending on the time that the equinox occurs, then you're going to have to maybe call this 36 days. Every single month has 30 days except ELO. Now, I have been saying, because I was not doing this math, I was listening to all the scholars saying that the Jews intercalated in ADAR. I looked at that and I thought, well, why don't they just add the five extra days to Adar? And lo and behold, that led me on the search back to the priesthood, priestly courses, which led me to 1 Chronicles 24. And that's how they did it, except they didn't intercalate in Adar. They intercalated in Elul. 
and the links to the places where you can show that, including the Babylonian Talmud itself, are there. Now, I'm sure somewhere in Bible there's going to be mention about intercalating in Elul. Okay? That this is when you do it, in the middle of the civil year, which is the end of the, ver yeah, the end of the civil year, which is the middle of the vernal year. Because only if you do it then are you going to get your dates right. Because here is hard evidence of that. This is a real equinox in 2015. This is the real equinox in March 20. Okay? There's a link so you can see the equinox. There's a March 20 equinox. You can just Google on it and it'll be the first thing you say. See? And then here's the real September equinox. And here's the real Jewish calendar the way God designed it in the Bible. 30 days for every month, except now I'm intercalating in the correct place. I was intercalating before in Adar because that's what all the scholars said the Jews did, and that's what the Jews say they did. Okay, well, they did it wrong, and they didn't always do it. You intercalate in Elo. Now, I'm going to find somewhere, someday, if God caused me to find this through somebody sending me an email, alerting me to the problem, then God's going to cause me now to find out where in the Bible it says, yes, you intercalate in Elul. And that, of course, will be our smoking gun. Meanwhile, hello, the math is the math. Even a brain out can do it. So how come we aren't doing it already?